we need to tell you about the hardest day on the homestead so far. There is some graphic content in this video. We do discuss some butchery, so we wanted to make you aware. Welcome back to the Renewed Homestead, everybody. I'm Denise. And I'm Ben. And it is a beautiful day um, here on the homestead. I, I think we're acclimating because I was out at like 36 degrees working on the food forest and I said this is the perfect outdoor work weather. So I think we've acclimated to cooler temperatures since Arizona. You're getting there, yes. Yes, um, but uh, you know, not a cloud in the sky. It's an absolutely lovely day. Um, but we wanna talk a little bit about uh, what happened last weekend. Yeah, well, you know, we, uh, we knew this day would come, or those days would come, and we, uh, we thought we were better mentally prepared for it than we were, but uh, we butchered some of our sheep. And the first one to go was the most difficult. It was the first lamb that was born on the property. Now, it was a ram, and we already have a ram. Bugs. Bug. Yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not, you can see your breath and the bugs are out. But uh, Billy and William came over on Friday while Denise was gone, fortunately, and we put down two of the sheep. And this video is not about the butchery portion of the class. You know, we're going to put a link in here. Uh, Billy over at Permafesters Farm just did a great video on processing a deer, which is the same for pretty much any other four-legged animal out there, whether it's pig or deer or sheep or goat, whatever it might be. Great video, we'll link to that, but that's, that's not what we wanted to discuss today. And we're gonna, we'll show you some of the day and, and a number of people came over and it was, it was actually a great day, but it was, it was a sad day too. So we, uh, we put down the first two sheep. Um, again, it was that, that first lamb and... That, that, you, that was hard. I, I could not, I couldn't be here. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad for Denise. It. Yeah, glad I, Denise wasn't here for it. Um, you know, they kind of had a connection. He was, he's the only <laughs> sheep out there um, that would come to her. That's Ram, enough. Ramsey's so. is the only one that comes to me, but. Well, no, uh, Ramsey comes to me, the, but Ramsey uh, likes you better than me. Yeah. Ra Ramsey yeah. has rammed me and I couldn't squat for like three or four days. <laughs> so I get a little nervous. He, he could have done it much harder. Um, he's never done that to Ben. He makes me a little nervous. So I usually go up and I stay on the outside of the fence until Ramsey's put in the trailer. But Ramsey's nice to me. He just, yeah. he's, he's rammed me. And so that makes me just a little yeah. nervous, but the but, baby and I, baby yeah. would come to me and you had, you had that connection with the baby and, yeah. and Ramsey's is still here. The baby is not. So, um, everything in me wanted to look away at the moment that we ended its life, but um, and Billy, that, Billy did that. Bill, Billy did that. Uh, well, Billy and William together, but, um, but that's, you know, that, that's not fair to the lamb. As we say, we're taking care of our animals. We want them to have great lives. And that includes being there till that very final moment. And then as we process it and, and, you know, take this, uh, this, this creature from an animal to a carcass, carcass to meat, you know, we're, we're, we're hands on with the whole thing. And that's, and that is, that is homesteading. And for us, you know, city slickers or whatever you want to say, you know, this is all new to us. Whereas, you know, as, as I mentioned in an interview with Billy, our neighbor, Larry grew up with this, you know, from the time, probably from time he was even just barely walking, he saw that process happen on his farm. So as he, as he grew up, it wasn't, yeah. it, it was just second nature, but he has also said, he's like, I, I respect the animal and anytime you take a life, it's, it's, you know, that. And, and it, we prayed it, before. Oh, absolutely. We, we yeah. prayed before we, you know, I, we respect, they are a gift to us. God has given them to yeah. us just as he has his homestead and God has gifted us with these animals so that we can provide nutrition for ourselves. But I think it's really important that you respect the gift that God has given you. You respect the life of that animal and you give it its very best life. Yep. Um, yep. And, and you also, when you, I guess, dispatch for yep. a better term, um, you do it with reverence and respect. You thank God for the animal. 
Um, and I think what Billy says, you know, it was really difficult. And I, I'm still a little choked up about the baby a little bit. I mean, we, we this this is what we signed up for, right? This is what we're doing. And, and there are some really great benefits to it. And we'll talk a little bit about, you know, the benefits of, of raising your own meat. Um, but having reverence for that animal, even even to the end is extremely important and it's it's extremely critical and i think like billy says if if this gets easy then you're probably doing it too much yeah Yeah. it was interesting um i had texted one of my friends in arizona and and said that you know we processed sheep this last weekend and she was like oh man that's like that's like hardstead homesteading i can never kill an animal and we've had people Mm -hmm. ask well how could you do that to an animal you raised and I think like Billy said, um, you know, it's, it's one bad day, right? When we are so disconnected mm-hmm. from our food in this country, we don't know how it's raised. We don't know what chemicals have been put into it. We don't know what it's been eating. We don't know the conditions that it lives in, how the ranchers or the farmers are treating the animals. And you hope that they're treating them with dignity and respect, but you don't know. Sure. Years ago, you knew exactly where your food came from, right? You had a relationship with the farmer if, if you didn't grow it yourself. And we've really lost that. And I, you know, was trying to explain to my friend who was like, I can never kill an animal. I'm like, well, you know, I can appreciate that. But Ben always says, you know, that it's not born on a styrofoam plate, right? right. <laughs> you go to the grocery yeah. store. And, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's not there. It's not just, it's not just born there. You know, it has to be processed and it, and it has to be um, dispatched. It has to be killed. Um, and when you, when you have an animal on a feedlot, and I'm not saying every operation, right? Some operations are, are really respectful and really good, and there's a lot of great operations. But a lot of where we get our meat in this country, they're on feedlots. So they don't have access to fresh grass. They may be outside for a portion of the day, um, not very much at all. Um, they're getting stuck with, with all kinds of chemicals and chemical dewormers and all of these things that go back into the meat and then goes back into your body. Well, and, and cows, they're getting fed mm-hmm. grain. They're, they're yeah. not... Supposed and to be eating and, well, and, and sheep. sheep. Yeah, they're not supposed to be eating that. I mean, you watch Dr. Pole and you see animals that are fed grain constantly have these problems, and and you know they put a uh, what was it the trocar trocar punch a hole in the side of the stomach to let the gas out. I mean, because yeah, about, when the cows get bloated. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's you know you talk about a painful life, but yeah, and, and not saying that sheep can't get bloated on grass. I mean, sure. especially in the spring, there are things you have to be careful of. But you have far more issues when you feed an animal grain. Yeah. than you do when you have them in their natural environment on grass. And, you know, our animals are rotated. Um, yeah. They're in the sunshine all the time. They have access to really great water. Um, we do give them minerals. We do make sure that they have the right vitamins. Um, but it's like they have one bad day instead of an entire life of, right. of bad days, right? Right. And and it's done. Their life is ended respectfully and quickly and as painlessly as absolute absolutely possible but, yeah and i'm sure some but, people can't understand it but we also sure. give a lot of love to those animals while yeah. while they're alive because yeah, yeah. like you said they're they are a gift to us they, they get treats they get sweet feed and the chickens get mealworms and they're they're spoiled they're no, spoiled almost as spoiled as our doggies well not not as spoiled but yeah i, I, almost. I, I, I do spoil but, them i do <laughs> but without without going too sideways on it I, and when we're talking about raising your own food we're not just talking about about meat i mean even being disconnected from these huge farms that are out there, they're they're putting using seeds that have been altered with uh, genetically modified. Uh, genetically modified, which I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, but some of the stuff that they're putting up, that putting in there, and the Roundup and things that that are used to kill the weeds that grow up around it, that are competition. Well, that's still in your food mm-hmm. when it gets to you. So, and then and on the in now the other side of it before they plant. They're spraying, you know, they're putting down chemical fertilizers and, and all that. We don't have to do that. We've got sheep poop. We've got chicken poop. We're putting that in there. We've got, yeah. we've got wood that's ground up for mulch that's going to help provide nutrients to that food. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's, that's the bigger, broader picture. But, you know, to, like I said, to, as we introduced, we're talking today about, about the uh, processing of our sheep. And, and it was difficult. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't think. I think we we knew it was going to be difficult, but I don't think we were as mentally prepared with how difficult it would be. Yeah. And and so so grateful for Billy and William. Yeah. Because uh, I I think you even talked about it on the video. It's just having somebody there that has experience at it, and not just experience with the dispatching, right? But also experience 
um, with the butchering side of it and how to get the hides off and, and how to get, you know, the, the most, the, the, the most out of the animal so you don't waste anything. Right. I mean, that was to have that experience. And that's yeah. one of the reasons why we wanted to invite people over too, because yep. just like us, there's a lot of people that don't have experience with this and we wanted them to be able to learn as well. Yep. Um, and that was, that was yep. huge. And I know that was really helpful for you on Friday. Yeah. Well, and, and having people come over that that's how we met Billy and, and William and Michelle mm -hmm. over Perma Pastures Farm. We wanted yeah. to learn and that's, and we wanted to, pay that forward and, and have the opportunity for other people to come over. But I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but you were talking about, you know, taking this carcass apart. Well, the entrails, all the regular non-food meat items are all going into our compost, which will go back into our garden, which will grow new food and grow, uh, what have you been feeding the sheep oh, up here? Kale, kale. And greens so, and so yeah, the sheep, they love it. The sheep love the kale, it's good for them. So, you know, it, that's that's that whole you know circle, circle of life. You yeah. know, it, it it comes full circle, and and that's part of respecting that animal. We're making sure that absolutely every little piece of what used to be that animal is respected and used. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing goes in the trash, if you will. Well, it's even the we had. A, I don't know if any of you saw the video that we did. I would think was it April, I believe. We had, um, I think it was life and death on the homestead. Mm -hmm. um, the lambykins, and I know you're not supposed to name him. He's the one that um, went on Friday. Yeah. Um, but he was the first baby born on the homestead. Well, she had had a female, but yeah. it was still born. Um, and Ben uh, planted her in our orchard. Yep. So it was respectful, but it's also going to feed yeah. the plants that are there, um, the trees that are there and the plants that were growing there. And so, yeah. you know, um, so it's just yeah. to making sure that we're not wasting. No, nothing anything. is wasted. Absolutely. Yes. yes. So, um, so let's let's take a moment. Who who all did we have here with Billy and, Billy and William from Perma Pastures Farm? And in the background of that, Michelle was not here, but she made cinnamon rolls for everybody they for the so day. Amazing. Thank you, Michelle. Those were yes. oh boy. I'm telling, she, I'm telling you, you could become a baker. You could she, you could sell those. She does not give herself enough credit, so <laughs> I'm going to give her the credit. She is an amazing cook. She yes, is she an is. amazing baker. She's just an amazing person. Absolutely. They're just all amazing people. But yeah. yes, and, thank and we, you, Michelle. Yeah, and, and we don't want to make it sound like a party, but this was. You know, it was an event. I mean, we were we were here to learn, mm -hmm. but we also wanted people to be comfortable. You know, we set out coffee and we had we had some food and we did cook up some of the meat that we that we uh, processed that we processed. Should, yeah. We we put it on the grill and everybody got to try some, which I gotta gotta oh, Billy wow. Billy wasn't wrong. I mean, it tasted a lot like steak. I, I <laughs> I'm still not going to say that it's going we, to be as good as steak. We still we, have to do the blind we, taste test. We, so stay tuned for that. Absolutely. But, but, got everything in here from sirloin to bone in. <laughs> yeah. to, well, basically T bones and ribeyes, the yeah, cheap version of it. Way, yeah, yeah. But honestly, for me, the best for easiest the way reason, you can put them on a plate if you want. But honestly, nine times out of ten, my son over there, a.k.a. the Savage, yeah, will just eat these things like throw them out in the yard. Well, as long as no one thinks I'm on Cooth, I might try that. Whoever knew, lamb... And cinnamon rolls. cinnamon rolls. And these are amazing cinnamon rolls Michelle made for us. And they are amazing. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Everyone say thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. For the cinnamon rolls. Thanks, Mom. But it, it is very good meat. And I know, like I was asking Billy, um, you know, where do you where do you normally find this? And he was saying hair sheep because we don't have wool yeah. sheep. We have hair sheep. And for those that aren't familiar with it, we they they do grow thick fur, uh, th thick hair, kind of like dogs do, but it's mm -hmm. thicker um, yeah. for the elements in the winter. And then they shed it in the springs as as weather warms up. But you don't have to shear them. They they shed it yeah. um, just like dogs do. And wool sheep have lanolin, and that lanolin can go into the meat. So sometimes that's why you get that aftertaste it's a, it's or that a tangy. tangy yeah. yeah, and some people really don't like that. Um, hair sheep don't have that, and it is really, really good meat. And one of the things that I was really appreciative for when we took the animal out, we saw its organs. I really worry about how healthy our sheep are, right? Like we don't use chemicals, but we do use um, a natural dewormer. Yep. Um, just to keep them healthy. We do give them minerals. Um, we don't, there's no chemicals involved. And I wanted to make sure that the minerals we were using, how we were giving it, the other, the grasses, how we were raising them, 
Um, I want to make sure that we're doing it right. And Billy said the animals looked very healthy. The organs were f phenomenal. Yeah. He said it was a great looking sheep. And he's like, you can always tell by the liver, yeah. typically how an animal was raised. And, and that made me feel good that we're doing the best that we can for our animals. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and again, without going too sidetracked, that's one of the benefits of rotational grazing is they're, we move them enough that they're not eating their food off of where they're pooping. Yeah. So you have less worm issues. So. Yeah, and that's one thing, you know, as, as Jill Salatin says, right, the chicken is of the chicken. So you rotate the sheep while behind the sheep come the chicken. So what do they do? They, they eat the bugs or mm -hmm. anything that's there. They scratch that poop back into the ground. So by the time you bring those animals back to that area, that mm -hmm. poop's already back into the ground. Mm -hmm. yep. And in feedlots and these other areas, like even where we bought the sheep, um, you know, he had them in a, in a pen and it was dirt. Yep. And, and they, I know that he cared for them, you know, and, mm -hmm. and loved them. Um, but they weren't on grass, and so you have parasite issues, and he did deworm them, mm -hmm. and that was one thing. that He had dewormed Tilly, who was the um, sheep, sheep that was pregnant. Right. Yeah, and we asked him, I said, have you dewormed them? And he said, they haven't been dewormed in over six months. I'm like, okay, please don't. Um, so nobody else had, had been chemically dewormed, and that was really important to us because that goes back into the ground, right, and kills all that. So it, that goes into their bodies, that goes into their poop, that goes back into the soil, and it hurts um, the microorganisms that are in the soil. So we didn't want that, but all that's on the ground, right? So then they're eating that those parasites that are on that ground and they're eating off the ground and that just gives them more parasites and spreads those parasites. So that's why when you do rotational grazing, uh, you don't have those same parasite issues. And you, you can, you still get parasites, of course, sure. but you don't have the issues with it. And you can, and like Greg Judy talks about a lot, um, you can get to a point where your animals um, are really resistant to parasites. So they're parasite resistant and you, you breed the sheep that are really resistant to parasites. So then they have babies and then that resistance stays with them and that, and then the sheep that are a little weaker, um, it sounds horrible to say, but you cull those animals, but then you get a really, really great herd that doesn't have the issues with hooves. They don't have issues with worms. Um, and that's some of the benefits to regenerative agriculture and rotational grazing that you don't have in these feedlots. Yep. And it's just a far better life for the animals. Yeah. yeah. Gen genetically modifying without doing gene splicing. Yeah. And you know, I, I know I went off, you were talking about mm -hmm. the people that were here. So I went off. Oh, no, no, no. On. That's okay. I, I, I took, I, I led us astray as I often do, but <laughs> so who, who all did we have here? You're better with names. Uh, well, Jason was so the land, well, which we're really yes. appreciative. Okay. Hi, we are here with Jason. Yeah. And do you want to talk a little bit about your channel? I'm sure. sure most people know who you are, but. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I have a, so uh, my channel is called So the Land. Yeah. We have a YouTube channel and just doing homestead stuff. You know, uh, doing what everyone else is doing here, like just trying to grow our own food and just uh, live more uh, simply and sustainably and growing our own food and just sharing about it and documenting that journey. And you came from California, correct? Yeah, Southern California. We moved out here about five years ago now. Um, and we've been here ever since and we love it. Uh, the best thing we've ever done. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's I tell Ben all the time I get to wake up to a postcard every day. Yeah. Totally. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, like, you know, it's, it's a lot of hard work and a lot of figuring it out and, and making do sometimes, but, but it's enjoyable. I think you learn more from your mistakes anyways. That's true. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much for coming out and for helping. We really appreciate yeah, it. Thanks for having me out. It's fun. Yeah. Um, I'm sure most of you know who, who Jason was so the land is. He yeah. came to learn um, and to help. So that was really appreciative. Now yeah. he left without getting meat. We were trying to send meat home with everybody, but Jason left without meat. So Jason, swing by. if, if, if you're, you're watching, swing by, we've got some meat for you yeah, yeah but but if you don't know jason from so the land tune into his channel i mean he he kind of did exactly what we did he's about a year or two ahead of us but he, yeah, i think he's been here four he, or five years now okay well yeah. he he moved his family all the way from california to start a homestead out here and you know we're from arizona and out yeah. here so then who, who else did we have here? um then we had the modern yeoman yep, sean, sean. And, and holly so we are here um the Butchery part is done. We're just waiting for everything on the grill. We put oh, some lamb wait. on the grill. We can't wait. We are all wait. starving, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but can you just tell us a little bit about you all? I'm Sean, and this is my wife, Holly. And you can find our channel on YouTube. It's called The Modern Yeoman, Y-E-O-M-A-N. He's an amazing storyteller. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Love if you guys came over and hung out with us and checked out what we're doing. Um, but yeah, we've been doing this. We actually moved to our homestead about the same time that you guys moved to your homestead yeah. in August of 2020. In this general area, we're in East Tennessee, just outside of Knoxville, and learning as we go. Yeah. All right, 
right. Anything you want to add? I'm just the silent accomplice. <laughs> <laughs> you said. <laughs> okay. Thank you all so much yeah. for being here. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Really great people. Yeah. I know a lot of you are probably familiar with the Modern Yeoman. Really, really mm -hmm. great. He's such a good storyteller. He like is. I really appreciate well, watching are. him. They both yeah. are. You can they tell. both are. Yeah. They just they just have this way of weaving the stories in and out, and yeah. and even watching his video about the day, we were like, wow, that's really like <laughs> just yeah. really like, great. We, we got. Hey, you set the bar higher. We need to right. up, we need to up our game. <laughs> right. Yes. Um, so yeah, and, and we were appreciative for them. They, you now they had never processed a sheep, right? So we wanted to invite them in so they could learn. Um, and then uh, we had the traveling nurses that were here. That Billy, I know they were a little shyer, so I don't want to give names in case they don't want to their names yeah. out there. But they are um, they're nurses, um, and they have recently just bought a homestead in Virginia. And they are focusing on on homesteading, kind of doing what we all want to do, right? Like raising our own food, um, you know, making sure that number one, we're not tied to the to modern agriculture, but also as food prices and everything raise. Like, I mean, I know a lot of you, like we've talked about before, that Ben definitely um, has been prepping for a long time. And as Zach at American Homestead says, and we've talked about this often, but you know, if you follow prepping to its logical conclusion, you end up on a homestead, right? And, and so, here we are. and here we are. And, so it was really, really great. And then, of course, Billy and William. Of course, oh, yeah. <laughs> we're teaching yeah. the class and helping yeah. us all learn how to do it. And we'll do this is your tenderloin. That's the back of the animal. This right here, right? Yep. That's your tenderloin. Jason, there's your tenderloin. Okay. So if you and that's at, a really good cut, right? Minute, what yep. does it look like to you? What kind of cut of meat do you buy in the store that looks like that? It's like uh, T-bone. What's that? T-bone. T-bone on a cow, that'd be your porterhouse there further you back. <laughs> ben knows okay. a steak. But on this end is your ribeye. <laughs> Okay, so we could do Delmonico ribeyes. We ain't gonna learn none of that today, y'all. That's pimp level two. So, and we'll definitely want to do it again. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I yeah. don't. I don't want to. I you know, a couple of days of instructions. I am not ready to jump in both feet and do this all by myself and say, yeah, yeah, I'm ready to go. You know, it's. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd like somebody to hold my hand through it at least one more time, probably two. But, yeah. Yeah, but it was yeah. great having that experience here. And it was like for us, like, and, and that was one of the things we wanted to invite people here that wanted to learn. Because I remember, you know, now Ben started watching all these channels before I did, right? Like before we, I think three years before we even got on this homestead, like we, we had been planning this yep. for several years. And as you all know, we were passing legislation in Arizona. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we were delayed by about four years while we, we got that passed. And it passed um, March 3rd of 2020. Yep. And, you know, a few weeks later, we were we were like... H well, houses on the market. Houses on the market. And yeah, we, I was like, Let, let's go. Um, but we researched a lot before we got here. Yeah. yeah. We researched what, what elements we wanted, what was important, you know, always, always number one is water. And be, because I do have a nearly 50 hour a week job, I had to have reliable internet and all, all those things. We researched properties, but as we went, as we've said, they, every single one just sold as we were on our way out, gone, gone, gone. Some of them have been on the market for three years and gone and this is the first place we saw. Yeah. You've heard that story, but yeah, but God kind of directed us here. But we were still like we were still so green, right? Like, we, oh, yeah. you know, we did a ton of research, but uh, like you know, it's going to be hard work, right? But you can research till the cows come home until you actually do it. You know, yeah. you're not going to get that experience to really understand, uh, fully understand, right? Um, and we had never processed animals, like like Ben said. We're both from the city, right? And um, I he had started watching. Uh, Permapastures Farms, Modern Yeomen, So the Land. I mean, all all, all the channels that y'all I'm sure are familiar with. Yep. Um, and uh, and and thanks to the Modern Yeomen, we've actually got a couple other channels that we're starting to watch, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah that definitely. are actually near us, which is cool. But I had I had gone on to Instagram. He had started watching Permapastures Farm. I was watching. I'm like, I love what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I had just messaged them and said, Hey, if you ever process chickens, you know, uh, we'd love to come help and learn. And I mean, William right away was Instantly. like, yeah, come on over. You know, we're going to do this. I think it was like two two or three weeks later, right? About that, yeah. They caught us over, and that was the first time we had ever processed. And just yeah. having that experience was huge for us. Like getting, getting that hands-on experience, understanding what the process was, and, and a lot of things you're not prepared for. And, yeah. you know, you see it on TV, but until you're there, you yeah. know, we, we did kind of a video, you know, about our experience with the chickens. Um, but yeah. it was just such a huge help to us, and that was our first experience into 
um, mm -hmm. processing. And so we, you know, we wanted to provide that for people that can make it that day as well. And that's, yep. and that's kind of what homesteading is, right? That's what the community is, is, is teaching each other. Cause people that are ahead, like two or three years ahead of us, four years, five years, or like Billy are way ahead of us, right? Like we can rely on them. And then the things we've learned, the people that are just starting this, you know, even though we've been only been a little over a year now, we can, you know, come alongside them and try to help them. Yeah. I mean, that, that's what this is about. Yeah. And, and we talked about it before when we went and met uh, Pinball Prepper in Tennessee and, mm -hmm. and his event. And it was interesting, you know, we still we still feel very green, very, very, very much a noob, oh, as, yes. as Jake would say, noob. Um, <laughs> yes. But we had all we had a number of people come up and like, wow, what are you doing? Where are you? What are you doing? And, and like, like, you know, trying to get information out of us, which which is great. But it's like. Wow, when when did I, when did we become experts? Right, you know, yeah, but they're, no, no they're, near. they they are where we were a couple of years ago, which is which is cool because I love being able to share, you know, our our uh, triumphs and uh, successes and mistakes, uh, and, successes and failures and, 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 and like all that. I say, and, yeah, the mistakes are where you learn. It's, yeah. yeah, successes you learn, but you yeah. learn more from mistakes. Yeah, for sure. 